quite a lot of things have changed here on Verhonga Savannah, but one of the things that has not changed is just the sheer number of animals that you can take down on this map. There still is very large populations of every animal here. They have just been spread out quite a bit, and each and every one of them has been given a new drink time for the most part. So, we're going to go over some of that stuff today and just take a look at all the different species while also exploring my map a little bit and trying to see if we can get ourselves a diamond or a rare. I have not done a lot of hunting on Verhonga, just enough to kind of figure out what the new times are. And I gotta say, I am very impressed with what they've done with Verhonga Savannah. I think out of all the maps that they made adjustments to, this is easily the best of the four. Overall, I've got to say this has been one of the most fun updates to date. Uh, it was definitely quite enjoyable to experience Mississippi for the first time, but I gotta say, I am absolutely loving using the ARs on all of these revamped maps. It's cool to see lots of animals in new places that we've never seen them before, along with having uh, drink times that they've never had in the past. It really has made uh, a lot of these maps just feel more alive because there's more stuff available at different times of day. And I think the biggest change in my opinion for Verhonga Savannah that we're going to take a look at very shortly uh, besides uh, hotspot changes which we'll go over those eventually but one of the biggest things that I am a huge fan of is the fact that wildebeest now drink in the daytime and they actually drink at a pretty perfect time as well. With the drink time for Will to be starting at 6.30 and going clear until 9.30, I've got to say this is probably the best time change they've made for any of the species on Verhonga Savannah. And as you guys can see over there, we do have some blue wildebeest drinking at this lake, and I believe there's typically quite a few more around here. I don't have them here at the moment, but earlier today when I was streaming, uh, by the time this video goes out, it'll be a day or two ago. But when I was streaming, we found lots and lots of wildebeest, but I do believe I deleted those zones probably at this point from the sheer amount of wildebeest that I have took out with the brand new uh, 308 AR. But there is a male really close to us. Let's go ahead and get a shot into this guy. And the 308 just works absolute wonders on these things. It really is an awesome rifle. I am just so, so happy that we finally have ARs into the game, and it sounds like we have a lot of wildebeest running away. And yeah, that is a really nice gold right there. If we could get that guy, that would be amazing, and I think he just might give us a chance. Here we go. And just like that, we've got two shots into him, and he should be going down. Now let's see if we can figure out where the rest of that herd went. But before I chase after those others, let's go ahead and get some shots into these two because I kind of uh, feel like it's not right to just leave them alone. We got to take them down. So as we go to claim these, I think it's about time I talk about something that I was going to do but ended up not doing. Uh, you might be wondering where my first look video is because I almost always do a first look video for any new content that I get a chance to try out. But I really wasn't happy the way the video turned out, so I decided not to upload it. But I am going to post one of the trophies that I did manage to get from that video. It'll just be uh, put into a different video uh, down the line, probably in a day or two. But I really just was not happy with the way my first look video turned out. I don't feel like it would have been a very good quality of video to release and it ended up going way longer than I wanted it to so I think this time I'm just going to skip on the first look video. But we will be showing off everything good that I ended up getting during that video so don't you guys worry about that. We still will show off anything uh, nice trophy wise that we managed to achieve but but I plan to go over a lot of things with the ARs as well as everything to do with the uh, new changes to all the different reserves as much as I can in the next few days. And let me know down in the comments which reserve you would like me to talk about next. Because today we're going to be talking about Verhonga Savannah as you guys have seen already. But I'm not entirely sure what we should do next. So let me know down in the comments what map you want me to talk about next and also which gun you would like me to do more on because... Not only is there three brand new rifles with this weapon pack, but there's also the buff to the 22 Hornet, and we've got the special 454 that you get just for being a part of the Hunter Call of the Wild. This is the five year anniversary revolver that is going to be coming to the game with this update, so let me know what you guys would like to see more on, and we will try to include it more in future videos. But that is a level three blue wildebeest, got a single lung at that angle, 
Uh, didn't quite get the penetration because of the angle we were at, but still did pretty good on it. There is this little level 3 right here. This is another male, a 3380, so it actually did end up making gold. You know, that's actually kind of crazy. It's very high above the gold rating. I did not realize that level 3s could score that high above gold. That kind of makes sense though, because they are a pretty easy level 4 diamond to get as well. Now, Verhonga Savannah had honestly way too many changes to include in one video. Pretty much every animal has had its locations completely switched around, along with their uh, drinking, feeding, and resting times changed as well. So, there's really too much to go over in one video, so I'm just going to focus on the main things that I noticed while playing for the last few days. And uh, one of the big changes I noticed was right down here, this is Cape Buffalo territory now. There have never been Cape Buffalo at this lake before, but now that is actually a thing. Uh, we're actually on top of their zone at the moment, so I will move out of here. And we're going to take a look at these amazing uh, Cape Buffalo in this area. Honestly, it's really cool to see them down here. I always wondered why this lake didn't have them. I mean, it looks like the perfect kind of lake to have Cape Buffalo. It's got all the kind of like marshy look to it with all these uh, reeds around the lake. It just really felt like it would fit for them. But the Cape Buffalo do drink from 9.30 clear until 12.30 now, so it, it's kind of interesting, like, they were pushed ahead one time but didn't get an extension on their end time, so they actually drink for an hour shorter than normal, which I actually really did not expect, but uh, I guess it is what it is, we're just gonna have to adapt to the changes. Well, uh, they're not at their zone for some reason, but I mean, you guys did see it on the map, so I guess it's not too big of a deal that they decided not to show up. But they do end up drinking here now, which is honestly kind of crazy. I love it though. I do think it's a great change. Honestly, when I first started this video, I had kind of intended it to just be a look at all the different uh, new drink times, but... Honestly, I think I'm going to turn this video into kind of a look at, I guess, the most noticeable changes that I have found here on Verhonga Savannah. One of the big ones that I noticed is this Gemsbok hotspot down here is no longer a thing. Uh, all I found down here is a few Springbok zones, but there's absolutely zero Gemsbok hotspot anymore. However, there is a new one that has emerged. It's not nearly as crazy as the previous, but if you go over to this lake right here, to the left of the uh, central savannah name, you'll find a few need zones down here that are pretty full of Gemsbok. So let's go take a look at them. Well, there we have a few of the Gemsbok. That's actually a brand new feed zone that I had not discovered previously. Uh, we've got some more Gemsbok right there, and then we've got another Gemsbok over here. It looks like I don't have nearly as many as I did earlier, but that's probably because I shot a bunch of them. But as you can see, there's three need zones lined up. So it's definitely not as crazy as what the old hotspot was like, but I have noticed there's quite a few need zones here. And I actually do think that I'm not able to see all of them right now. And yeah, we got some more right here. So now they're finally breaking into view and you can see that there is a decent amount of Gemsbok here. Once again, this is nowhere near what the hotspot used to be like, but... It's at least good to know that you have a spot that you can find a decent amount of feed zones for Gemsbok. One of the biggest changes this update had was the need zones don't have as many animals as they used to. They're a lot more spread out, like for example on Rancho, there used to be some drinking zones that would have like three herds of whitetail. Now they're honestly way less. It's more like one herd and the herd is half the size. So they've made major changes like that to kind of help performance. It definitely is going to slow down the grinding as well as improving the performance, so... Uh, it, it's a little unfortunate, but at the same time, it is a bit better, I think. Just because there'll be less people lagging, and also... That is some Wildebeest. Interesting. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. So this actually could be a pretty good area, because it doesn't just have Gemsbok. There actually is some Wildebeest as well. That's pretty cool. I like that. Honestly, the Gemsbok may be the one with the most interesting changes, because not only did they move around the feed zones a lot, but uh, they, they drink at night now. 3.30 to 6.30 for a lot of the zones. This one is 3.30 to 6. So, yeah, not, not the greatest uh, drink time for the Gemsbok, but you at least get like an hour, hour and a half of daylight to hunt them, so I guess it's not terrible. It's just moved back a, quite a bit. I think it used to be like... Maybe a 5 to 9 zone or something like that. I don't even remember, but I know it wasn't this early. 
Another change that I feel is pretty significant and will most likely be very well received is the fact that Kudu now drink at 1830 instead of in the middle of the night. This is honestly a massive change before there was no way to hunt Kudu in their drink zones without it being just pitch black and a lot of people didn't like that. Now I have not been able to test out the old Kudu hotspot during their resting time but I'm assuming it probably will have changed but whenever I figure out what their resting time is I'll do an update on that and kind of show you guys what the hotspot is like. And at some point I'll probably do a video just kind of going over all the old hotspots and what has changed with them. But as I was saying, the Kudu drink from 1830 to 2130, which makes them the exact same as Red Deer on Tiawaroa, I think this is a good change. You at least get an hour or so of hunting them in the daylight, which is definitely an improvement over what they were before. Warthog have also been moved around and they now drink at around 1530 to 1830. So you guys are probably going to notice by now that all of the times kind of flow into each other, which is going to make it so that every single map you join in multiplayer no matter what time it's at there will be something drinking and I think that's a pretty awesome thing I've always wondered why there's some maps where you'll go like seven or eight hours of the day where nothing is drinking all you have is feed zones and rest zones to hunt it's always just never made sense to me but I love the direction they're going they did this with Layton as well and now here on Verhonga they're doing the same thing Every single hour of daylight has something drinking at the lakes, which is huge in my opinion. That's really going to make it so you can hunt at any time of day and have some pretty good luck on any of these maps that got the changes. Now, one thing that's actually really interesting is they did not change anything with the lions as far as I know. I've seen them in the same place as they always were. I haven't really seen any time changes for them, so I think lions are virtually untouched, which is probably a good thing because the lions were one of the few ones where they actually felt like they were in a really good place and I think one of the reasons that they didn't touch the populations of lions is probably because there wasn't too many of them to begin with so they didn't really need many adjustments so I'm pretty happy with that I'm glad they didn't mess up the lions at all uh, everything else has been a very positive change though from what I've seen now there's a couple things I'm curious about I have no clue what the drink time is for Jackal or for the hares. So I'm not exactly sure where I should be looking. I'm gonna assume they're in the middle of the night since I haven't seen them during the daytime and I've hunted pretty much every hour of daylight. So I haven't figured it out for them. Maybe the rabbits don't even have drink zones anymore. It's really hard to say. I might do a little bit of searching later, but I think what we're gonna do now since we've gone over a lot of the major changes, obviously we haven't gone over all of them, that would be impossible to do in one video, we'll uh, save the rest of them for another video, but... Cape Buffalo? Cape Buffalo drink here! Are you kidding me? That is incredible! Oh, I am going to have so much fun blasting Cape Buffalo here. This is honestly gonna be really cool being able to hunt Cape Buffalo at this lake. That I didn't expect. I mean, it makes sense because this lake got them, so I guess why wouldn't this one have them? But anyway, as I was saying, now that we've gone over most of the changes and we'll probably save the rest of the changes for another video, I'm going to go ahead and do a bit of trophy hunting and see if I can find anything good. I'd really like to uh, find some awesome trophies for you guys to see get taken out with these new ARs. So I'm going to spend the next couple hours searching around, shooting as much as I can and hoping for some good respawns and well, we'll see what we get. Well, finally, after a very long time of searching around, we actually have found ourselves something good. And it's something that actually I really would not have been too excited about a couple months ago because it's one of the things that actually got changed with the Mississippi update. And that is a beige Gemsbok. These used to be an uncommon, but nowadays they are considered a rare. So this is actually pretty cool to find. It's a very decent level 3, so let's go ahead and take that down with the 308. Let's see how it ends up doing from this distance. That is probably going to be a good shot. And wow, that's a decent 4 as well. Not quite diamond. And um, you know what? One more for good measure. If it's going to give us the shot, we might as well take it. Okay, so this lake is officially amazing for Gemsbok. We have that herd over here. We have a herd over here, and then there was also one over here that I saw running off, so there's honestly a lot of them around here. Uh, let's see. There he is. 
so this little lake is actually right here at the base of the mountain. I think most of you probably know about this lake. It used to be pretty much only good for Warthog and Cape Buffalo, but it looks like it is a Gemsbok location now, which is very interesting. Well, it looks like the first shot was good, but because we were so far away, it started dying very slowly. Uh, second shot definitely put the nail in the coffin for this one, though. And uh, this will be, I think, only the second beige Gemsbok that I have seen since the Mississippi update. So if that doesn't tell you how rare they've become, I don't know what will, considering I hunted a lot of Gemsbok since then. Verhonga's always been one of those maps that I've loved hunting the hotspots on. And uh, yeah, Gemsbok were always like the main thing that I would hunt here. And for me to only see two of them since that update is kind of crazy. But it's still cool to finally get another one down. And it's honestly a really big level 3 as well. 303 scoring level 3. That's a big beige Gemsbok. Not bad at all. You know, I'll take that any day. It's probably not anything that I will uh, keep in my main lodge, but uh, definitely worth saving and putting into one of the secondary lodges. And I suppose since I got this question quite a bit today, I will check out the main uh, hotspot lake that used to be crazy good for Gemsbok. It's not looking too good. I don't see anything here. I think they definitely uh, stopped this from being as good of a hotspot as it used to be. In fact, I don't see a single Gemsbok down here at all. I'm starting to think they actually don't go clear down here anymore. I mean, I'll check these other two lakes down here and see if maybe there's some over there. But I got a feeling they just completely removed them from the southern lakes. You know, one thing that I really feel is going to become a thing with this update is uh, the fact that I think Gemsbok are probably going to become a little bit of a harder diamond to get and a little bit harder rare to get as well just because you simply don't see as many of them close together anymore. Uh, they're much more spread out along with most of the species on Verhonga Savannah, so I think the days of seeing tons of diamond Gemsbok everywhere are over. And, uh, oh, oh, that's a gold. Oh my gosh, that's a gold right there. Well, apparently we're having the rare luck, however, so that's pretty sweet. That's actually a really good gold as well. I think that might be my best gold Gemsbok. You know what? Let's try to take this thing down right now. Give one more in it, just for good measure. Man, I absolutely love using this uh, rifle for the Gemsbok. Even though we technically could be using the 300 Magnum, it would be slightly stronger. Honestly, you don't lose much power by using the 308 instead. I've found that it does plenty well on a uh, class 7 and 8 size animals. Well, I really did not expect to be finding a second rare Gemsbok today, but I guess considering they completely reset the populations and redistributed them, it really does make sense that we would find multiple rares. So let's go ahead and pick this thing up and see what this one ends up scoring. And this one is a 291 gold. That is a beauty right now. Wait, did... Right there, I meant. Right there. <laughs> my gosh. My English has been awful the past couple days. I really don't know what has happened, but if you guys have been hanging out in the live streams, you have heard all kinds of uh, really interesting uh, misspeaks. So, yeah. It's been interesting. I don't know what's been happening, but the last couple days I've just not been able to properly speak. But uh, anyway, that is a beautiful gold Gemsbok. And... I don't know, is it just me or did they kind of maybe lighten the fur up a little bit on these things? It might just be that I've never killed one at nighttime, so the background is causing it to look a little bit different, but I think that honestly looks a little bit different maybe. But I do think it looks great regardless, and that is a very good sized male, so overall, an awesome trophy. You know, honestly, there is no better way to finish things off than to wipe out an entire herd of fallow deer, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below. And also, be sure to subscribe, uh, click that like button, and ring that notification bell. I realized I just said like twice, but I, I kind of messed that up. So, uh, ah, this is becoming a mess. Well, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace!